Welcome to Iron Lotus Tai Chi. So we're going to have our, uh, another look at the um, bits of the Beijing 24 and we'll start with just a recap of from where we've got up to from the last two lessons and then we'll have a look at the next little bits, okay? So I think I'll, um, I'll start over here with my back towards you so that way if you're facing me you can do the same thing that I'm doing, okay? So we've got feet close together. We're thinking about being empty, no heaviness, no lightness, no stretch, no compression. Then within that emptiness, we let the yin sink into our right leg. It becomes very heavy. Our left leg just becomes light and yang, and we can step out, the shoulder width. Then back to empty, back to wu ji. Okay. Then we want to feel sinking heavy down the tailbone, and that heaviness down the tailbone is mirrored by the lightness coming up the front, then sinking down, down to the waist height, turning the ball. Left hand comes back in, left her goo point turns in, parting the wild horse's mane. Step, wait for it, open up. Rock back, turn, squash the ball. Again, roll this right arm in, her goo point pointing towards the back. Step, wait for it, open up. And then, okay, wait back, then turn, squash the ball, roll that left shoulder in the middle of her goo point, rolls in, step across, open up, sink. Turn the body, half step in, turn the body back to the right, white crane, right hand is protecting the side of the head, body unwinds, empty step. Turning the body left to block across. That hand comes down, other one comes up and across. Draw the toe in. Left hand is coming down and in while right one comes up. Turn the right head over. Split right elbow back a little as left elbow comes across. Step and press. Brush knee. We do our brush knee three times. As we turn the body, this front hand blocks across. Left hand scoops up, turns over. Little split as we turn, step, and press. Same again, rocking back, turning right hand, palm up, scooping up with the fingers, right elbow back a little as we turn, and press. Okay, from there, we do a half step up, so almost like someone's grabbed this arm and pulled it towards them, and we let it stretch to our shoulder, then to our hip, then to our back foot, back foot comes in and then like the rubber band has been released, boing, springs back in, empty step, play the lead. Okay? So this one, some of the applications of this one here is if someone has grabbed your arm and pulls towards them, you follow and you try and strike in the chest. Cool. And often if you push towards someone like that, that there can be a reflex to, you know, to either pull away, in which case you can follow, or to resist. And if there's a strong resistance, then form, pull them back in, and then into play the loop. Okay. So from our last brush knee, again we're pivoting around this hip, turning. So again, it's not just from the shoulder. Okay? We want to feel that this comes from the legs and the waist. So we turn pivoting around this hip that stretches out half step in and then like a rubber band boing and we feel that spring in and then empty step to play the loop with the heel on the ground and this play the loop position is a defensive position okay so you've got right hand just this side of your center line like where your buttons are the other hand and if you bring them across the right hand that's close to you should be about elbow length so that that's, you know, if you grab someone just above the elbow and on the wrist, that's when you've got that manoeuvrability. If the hands are too close, both hands are below their wrist, they can still bend their elbow and are still free, okay? So you want to have that sort of wrist to elbow distance if you can, okay? Um, yeah, okay, so from there we go into repulse monkeys, okay? So repulse monkeys move, we've got foot out there we've got our play the loop we turn our body and as we turn 
left shoulder goes forward, right one goes back to the left hand, spirals out this way, and the right elbow comes back. Now, that very first bit of that move, one of the applications of that is if someone has bear hugged you, there's quite a small circle around your body here. When you turn and expand like this, you make this circle around the body much bigger. So if someone's monkey gripped you and you do that, it will actually lift them. And because you're not trying to lift them up like this, you're just thinking forward and backward, it's very strong leverage to, to lift them up and they'll tend to sort of lift, lift up and sort of fall towards your left if you're doing it with the right elbow back. This right elbow also, if someone's bear hugged you and your right elbow goes out there, that's not going to do too much to them. If you turn the body, that right elbow is going to come in and hit them. Okay, so at the same time as they're being stretched and lifted, that elbow is, is striking. Okay, so we want to be mindful of that. I see a lot of people, and when I first learnt and didn't know the application of this move, I used to pull back and lead with my wrist. Which again, if someone's there, and you pull back with your wrist, that does nothing to them. If you've got this elbow, boom, you give them an elbow in the chops, okay? So, well, I'll do that um, with my back to the camera a couple of times. Okay? So, we've got weight in the right foot, left heel down. As we turn, left palm goes forward and is palm down, right elbow comes back. So we've got that little elbow there. At that point, we've probably broken the person's hold and that's when we're kind of pushing them away. And this next bit has another application where we spiral the front hand and we step through, turning the body, push through. Okay, so having just a quick look at the application of the next part of the move. So again, once we've done this bit, we're here. If someone grabs this arm, or if you grab their arm and you spiral, we'll tend to lock their arm, okay? So you're gonna turn it from palm up to palm down. That locks the arm. And then you step in to draw them in, and boom, okay? So it, it's, Actually, I've given you. So from here, okay, so after this first bit where we've broken the hole, here we have this front arm palm down, we turn it palm up, okay? So that turns someone's arm to lock the elbow, lock the arm. So that's going to do this sort of action to someone's arm, okay? So we've gone there, we've turned it up. You need to make sure you turn it far enough that your arm is a bit stretched, okay? So that ensures you get the health benefit of the spiral stretch, but it's the same thing gives it the martial effectiveness. Spirals, it locks that joint. We step through and we draw it in and forearm strikes the elbow. And this can be done very softly and slowly and then push a person down, which won't do anything. Or it can be done very quickly, which will break bones, okay? And dislocate things, okay? so. Just want to be yeah, mindful of what, what you're aiming to do with these moves, okay? So even if you have no intent to use it in a martial context, the understanding will give you that, oh, I need to twist there to get my health benefit for my stretch, okay? I need to twist there to get my um, martial effectiveness. Same thing, okay? All right, so I'll go a couple facing this way, then I'll do a couple facing that way, then a couple more back to the camera, okay? So if we're out here and we turn, left hand goes forward, right hand comes back, bringing that one up, locking that elbow, stepping through, and then as we push through, okay? And then same again, opening up. As we push through, it's breath out. As we open up, it's breath in. Okay, and this one in the form we do four times. And one more time. Okay, so same, let's do the same from the other side. We've got left foot out in front, left hand out in front. Turn the body to the right. Let them push that left shoulder forward, right shoulder back. So 
but that hand is calmed down. We come up near the ear here, front hand up, step through, and dropping down into that back foot gives us a strength there, okay? Opening up again, spiral that front hand to lock the joint, step through. Thinking a little bit about our footwork as well, we want to get a nice spiral or curve in that footwork, so it's going to come in close to the other foot, then back out to the side. And then one more time. Okay, at the end of that repulse monkey, left hand comes down, left toe comes in, right hand comes over the top to hold the ball. Okay, so I'll do that once more facing away from the camera. Okay, so we're returning right. Right elbow comes back as left hand goes forward. Right hand drops down and out to the side. Make sure you're not pulling it back, tensing the back and the shoulder. Spiraling the front hand to palm up. Stepping through, curve in the step. Turn to push through. Same again, left one sinks down. Up near the shoulder, front one palm up. Step through, to number two. Same again, opening up, number three. Last one, number four. And then right hand comes up and over the top of the ball, left hand comes under, left toe comes in, coming into the end of the last one, a hold the ball position. Okay? So if you have a look at that and again try and get that you know comfortable. And these moves often when we're practicing in the training hall. We'll do the whole length of the hall, just doing this move, okay? Or, you know, and you rock back, repeat, and then this move again. We'll do it for the whole length of the hall. Same for our brush knee. We'll, you know, we'll do our brush. And each time you're doing it, you can focus on different things. So until you're very familiar with the form, when you're thinking about your feet, other things will fall apart. When you're thinking about your right arm, your left arm will do a little bit not quite what it should. When you're thinking about turning from the waist, you know, something else might sort of fall apart a bit. But with repetition, you'll get things really smooth and a real kind of, um, not having to think about it, a real automatic kind of response. So these moves, part of the wild horse's main brush knee, the pulse monkeys, it just, you know, do them 10, 20 times, 30 times, 40 times, and you'll start to get a lot more confident and a lot more fluid with it, okay? All right, we'll call that the end for this one. Thanks again for joining in. I'll have another one for you soon. Thanks very much.